I just want to talk to you this weekend about enjoying everyday life. I call my program, the television program, enjoying everyday life because it took me a long time to learn how to do that. I was raised by a man who wasn't very happy. How many of you were raised by parents that weren't very happy? And, and not only was my father not happy, he didn't really want anybody else around him to be happy. I can actually remember getting in trouble for laughing when he didn't feel like hearing somebody laugh. And so when you grow up in that kind of an atmosphere, you, you kind of learn to behave certain ways, thinking that if you do those things, then you're going to get approval. And so it seemed to me as I grew up that the more I worked and accomplished, the happier people were with me. So I became a first-rate workaholic, and everything in my life was about work, 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 accomplishment, accomplishment. But you know something I discovered? Biblically, God doesn't want us just to work all the time. He wants us to work, but he wants us to have a balanced life. And the Bible says that Jesus actually died so we could enjoy our life. But there's three things that I want to drum home in these four sessions. I want to talk to you about enjoying everyday life and think about every day underlined about 12 times. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you about enjoying a vacation or enjoying Friday because it's payday or enjoying going out and getting a new outfit or enjoying a party. I think even lost people can do that. You don't need to be saved to do that because that's really not real joy. That's just emotional excitement. And we know that that comes and goes, but true joy can be in you just like a calm delight, just kind of bubbling along, even when it doesn't make any sense to you. And the, the, the thing we have to realize is most of life is just really very ordinary. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and whoops, we're back to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You go to work, you clean the house, the house gets dirty, you clean the house again. You go to the grocery store, people eat it, you go to the grocery store again. <laughs> Come on, how do you know what I'm talking about? And so some of you think, you know, well, if I just had a different life. So the number two thing that I want to drive across this weekend is learning to enjoy your life. Stop wanting somebody else's life and learn how to maximize your life. Even if it's imperfect, and I'm sure that it is, I can promise you that even if you had another life, there would be things wrong with that life too that you don't see looking at it from the outside. And I don't care what you think. I don't ever get tired of traveling. I mean, like, I've been traveling like this now for 30 years. And all hotel rooms are not cute. <laughs> Amen? I mean, there's unique things. They have a bathtub, but lo and behold, there's no stopper. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, I won't even get into it. It's just, it's interesting. And so, you, you have to learn to be happy with everyday life and with your life and to stop looking at the things that are just wrong with your life and start finding the things that are right with your life and maximize them. And I've got some good scriptures to back this up. And then the third thing that I want to get across this weekend, and I'm going to be saying these things in different ways and teaching them in different ways, is that one of the ways that you can take an ordinary life and make it extraordinary is to learn to do every single thing that you do with and for God. Amen. Now, <laughs> so you're like, <laughs> see, one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we separate our sacred life from our secular life. And we think, you know, that well, I can be real, I'll be really close to God if I go to church. What? Well, you can be just as close to God in the grocery store if you decide to be. <laughs> and what we need to do is take everything and do it as a service to God. And I have scripture to back that up too. Everything as a service to God. When you get dressed in the morning, 
Do it so when you go out, you look nice for God. When you go to the grocery store, say, God, I'm doing this with you and for you. It's part of my everyday life, and I'm going to enjoy it. So you can enjoy anything if you do everything that you do with God. And it takes some training. You, I mean, you notice when I said it, I mean, I had one amen. <laughs> and so that tells me that this is not something that we think about doing. Brother Lawrence, who was a monk that lived in the 16th century, wrote a book called Practicing the Presence of God. And it's, I think they say it's the best-selling book ever besides the Bible. I don't, you know, you hear that about more than one book, so I don't know if it is or it isn't. But anyway, it is a real classic and just an excellent book if you've never read it. It's not real big, but it's just, it's, it's really good. And one of the things that he says that is so important is to take the things that you that you normally do as just common, ordinary things and do them all for God. Raise your kids for God. Let your marriage glorify God. Let your attitude glorify God. You know, we talk about worship, but the Bible talks about worshipers. He's seeking worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So, I mean, yes, God appreciates our worship that we had here tonight, and that's cool and that's good. But what he really wants at worship is more than singing a song. Worship is lived out in a lifestyle where we let God be involved in everything that we do, everywhere that we go. Can anybody say amen? amen. Let, me, let me just tell you the way I look at this. If we don't learn how to bring God into our everyday lives, then it all just becomes a bunch of spiritual hocus pocus that most of the world can't even understand and does not want anything to do with. But if we learn to live with and for God in everything that we do, come on, I don't care how long it takes me, we're going to get a breakthrough here. If we learn to do this in everything that we do, it begins to add an edge of excitement. And see, God is life. And if we want life to be in everything that we do, then we need to believe that he's in everything that we do. He's everywhere all the time. And believe it or not, he's just as interested in your laundry as he is some of the other things that you think are so important because really what God wants is fellowship. He wants to spend the day with you. He's with you all the time, so it's kind of sad to ignore him most of the time and only go and kind of speak to him a little bit on Sunday morning and when you think you're desperate. It will do something amazing for your life. If you'll begin to practice this, and it's a habit you have to form, it will take some time. But one of the greatest eye-openers to me, when God touched my life back in the 70s, I mean, I still remember I was going bowling that night. I bowled on Friday night in the league, and it was Friday when God touched me in my car. And I won't, I'm not going to go into that whole story, but I'd kind of come to the end of myself and was desperate. God, you got to do something. Back then, there was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and God just really, really touched me and more than anything, I think I just became very more acutely aware of his presence and his love. And I bowled on Friday nights in a league, and I wasn't bowling very good that night. And I wasn't accustomed to hearing the voice of God, but he wants us to know that we can hear from him. You can hear from God. Relationship is a conversation. And I'm not going to say that, you know, you're going to say something to God. He's going to say something back. You're going to say something to him. He's going to say something back. You can get yourself in trouble doing that. But God does speak to us. And you need to believe that you can hear from God. And he'll lead you and guide you in many different ways. But one of the ways is the still small voice. And that's, it's like a knowing that seems to be translated into words to you, but it's just really a spiritual knowing in your heart. And so 
Rather God said to me or I knew or whatever anybody's comfortable with people get freaked out when you say God told you something I mean it just seems like that there's all these little religious demons out there that just want to keep us from having any kind of closeness or intimacy with God anything that might be enjoyable and make life something really where we could go through with a smile and maybe affect some other people in the world amen and uh, so I I heard ask me to help you bowl and I thought I can I ask you ask you to help me bowl I mean this is bowling this is you know this isn't church or Bible reading or this is bowling but I knew that that was what God wanted me to do and so I just okay Lord please help me bowl good and I got better well you say well I tried that and I didn't get any better well then you believe that God's got a purpose and you're not doing better <laughs> amen and there's a lot of other things I could tell you but the point is is let God into everything that you do is it does, it, does anybody bear witness with this we just you know we need to we need to let God into every single thing that we do don't try to make it on your own all week and then run to church on Sunday morning and think that's gonna fix you for the rest of the week that's not gonna do it I can tell you the truth you can watch my program three times every day and that's still not going to completely do it for you we need the word but you need the presence of God in your life on a regular basis and that can make an ordinary everyday sometimes mundane rather plain and often boring life exciting and really something that you just because I can tell you the truth let me just tell you something if you start really hanging out with God you really never have any idea what he might do <laughs> amen so that's just absolutely the truth so those are the three things enjoying everyday life enjoying your life and learning how to do life with God I'm gonna say them one more time enjoying everyday life enjoying your life and learning how to do life with God amen so I think before anybody can really well first of all let me ask how many of you feel like you really do need to kind of stop being so stiff and starchy and learn how to enjoy life more how many of you feel much better about yourself when you're working than you do when you're enjoying how many of you don't care too much for work and you'd rather just enjoy <laughs> oh man I got a problem <laughs> Whew, maybe I better change my message you may take this one too seriously
I wasn't very good at having fun. I just didn't do fun very well. First of all, I don't have a lot of fun built into my natural temperament. Now, I've learned to be able to have fun, and everybody tells me I'm really funny, but truth, I'm more, more funny when I preach than in everyday life. But I mean, my kids think I'm hilarious. I don't know why. I think it has something to do with the old thing, but you know, they just, they think I'm really funny. And I had to really learn how to enjoy life on purpose. See, if you experience a lot of guilt and condemnation, you're not enjoying life. If you don't like yourself, you're not enjoying life. <laughs> if you've got a guilty conscience all the time, you're not enjoying life. So keep in mind, I'm not talking about a party, a vacation, payday, a new outfit. I'm talking about, can you enjoy plain old ordinary Monday? When you got to do the laundry and go to the grocery store and clean up the mess from the weekend, can you get up on Tuesday then and do it again? And on Wednesday and do it again? Can you drive in traffic? Can you do ordinary everyday things? Yeah, go ahead. The next time you drive in traffic, just say, God, I'm doing this for you. I'm grateful I've got a car and I'm not walking. I'm grateful I've got a job to drive to. Amen. Here's what I want to get across to you this weekend. If the devil cannot keep us sad and mad, then he loses the battle. I said, if the devil cannot keep us sad and mad, he loses the battle. The devil don't want your stuff. He wants your joy. Why? Because joy is strength. The happier you are, the stronger you are. So John 10, 10 means a lot to me. It says the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief is the devil. <laughs> but Jesus said, I came. Thank God. What a royal interruption. <laughs> Don't you love that? This is what the devil is doing, but Jesus said, hold it, I came. I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it.
in abundance to the full until it overflows. Wait a minute. God, in all of his holiness, says, I want you to enjoy your life and I want you to enjoy it in abundance to the full until it's running out of you. You know why? Because then it's liable to get all over somebody else around you. And I'm not talking about just extreme hilarity and going around giggling all the time and acting like an airhead. That's not even what I'm talking about. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing ordinary everyday life with a calm delight and a smile on your face because you know who you belong to and you know that in the end, what's going to happen? Yes. John 15, 11. You guys are going to have a much better day tomorrow than you've been having. Jesus says, I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy and gladness may be a full measure and complete and overflowing. Now, if you go back and look at what these things are that he's been telling them, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 10, all talk about abiding in Christ. And the word abide means to live, dwell, and remain in. Not to visit. It's not a Sunday morning visit. This is a, hey, I'm coming to live in you, and you're in me. We're one, and we're going to do life together. I'm your divine, holy partner. I'm sending the Holy Spirit to be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Abide, live, dwell, and remain in him. When you do, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. Honestly and truly, if you're lazy or you really don't care much about work, to tell you the truth, the closer you get to God, the more you're going to want to bear. really good fruit in your life. You're not going to want to just go through life and be useless and just take up space and never do anything worth leaving. Hey, listen, I'm leaving a legacy when I leave. I'm, I'm going to, I don't want people to just forget about me in two weeks. I'm going to leave something that they have to remember that I was here. Amen. I want God to get fruit from my life, not only while I'm breathing, but after I'm gone. Amen. I don't want to just take up space on the planet. If God didn't have something for us to do, as soon as we got saved, he would have just said, come on up. But he left us here because we all have a part. But we can do it with joy. Listen, the first several years that I was in ministry, I didn't enjoy it. I worked at it. I worked at it. It was work. And I was, you know, I was glad that I was doing it, but I didn't know how to really enjoy it. For example, I'd get up here and I'd be so more concerned about what the people thought that I couldn't really just cut loose and really enjoy myself. You cannot enjoy your life if everywhere you go, you got to try to be concerned about what everybody else is thinking about what you're doing. Oh, I wonder, wonder what they think of my outfit. I wonder what they think of my hair. <laughs> Instead of being concerned about what everybody's thinking about you, go be a blessing to somebody else and let people think what they want to think. As long as God thinks the right thing about you, that's all that matters. You know something? God has never, ever in your whole entire life ever thought one bad thought about you. You don't know any human being like that. I can tell you that for sure. He's never had a bad thought about you. He's never had hopeless thoughts. He doesn't look at you and say, well, there's no hope for you. 
God believes in you. He's got hope for you. He's got a future plan for you. And no matter how many times you've messed up, God is willing to give you another chance and another chance and another chance if you'll just be serious about your relationship with him. John 16, 24. Boy, this is a good one. Ask and receive that your joy might be full. Up until this time, you've not asked a single thing in my name, presenting all that I am. But now ask and keep on asking, and you will receive. So that your joy, your gladness, and delight may be full and complete. We're going to do a whole message in one of these sessions about learning how to just receive from God. God is not for sale. You cannot buy him with your good works. We don't do right things to get God to love us. We do right things because he loves us. There's a big difference. I love that. Ask and receive. Hey, instead of worrying about your kids all the time, ask God to take care of them. Receive it and get about the business of enjoying everyday life. Amen? If you're concerned that your company you work at is going to close down or you're going to get laid off, it's not going to do you any good to worry about it. Pray about it. Believe that God's working in your life. Trust that if you lose a job, he'll get you another one and go on enjoying every single day of your life. Well, I have some really good news to share with you right now. Do you know that even when you're having a problem, it's still perfectly okay for you to go ahead and enjoy your life? Now, don't ignore the problem, but recognize that the creator of the universe will help us deal with all of our circumstances and we can enjoy our everyday life. He wants you to do that. Well, we have two wonderful resources to offer you today. 20 Ways to Make Every Day Better book. My goodness, if you could even know one way that you could make any day better, I would think it would be worth getting the whole book just to find that one. And there's 20 in here. And then also some CDs called Simple Practical Changes with Real Results. I think you're going to really enjoy this. We all want to see changes, but we don't want our lives to be complicated. There are simple things that we can do that can make huge differences. So stay with us, and I'll be right back to share a little bit more. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate today? Well, whether you're having a good day or not, Joyce Meyer wants to teach you 20 ways to make every day better practical advice that you can apply right now to make a big difference no matter how your day is going 
pick it up for you or to brighten someone else's day. Then, with God's help, turn bad days into good and good days into great. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, f everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 So life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, y'all. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, y'all. Negative thoughts are poison, they ride. Uh. Head full of flies, so here come the clouds. Uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost uh. Yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken, I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause of sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Today, we're offering Joyce's new book, 20 Ways to Make Every Day Better, plus her CD series, Simple Practical Changes with Real Results, for your gift of $30 or more. Contact us now, 1-800-727-9673, or go to JoyceMeyer.org. Well, I want to ask you today to do something for me, but first I want to share a testimony with you. This man says, I was living in the dark. I had attempted suicide once and was going to try a second time. The day before I was planning to attempt again, I was switching through the TV channels and saw Joyce Meyer's program. I started to listen and couldn't seem to go away. God touched my heart and I started to cry. I felt peace and love in my heart that I wasn't used to getting from other people. Since that day, I know who Jesus is. I've now been baptized. I watch Joyce's program, Enjoying Everyday Life, every day. And sometimes at night, if I can't sleep, I watch the program online as well. You know, we've had numerous testimonies over the years from people who were going to commit suicide and they were flipping through the TV channel. And so in the process of that, God has actually used the word that I was teaching to save their lives. And so what I'm asking you to do today is to realize the impact 
that television can have today. You know, I say this frequently, not everybody who needs to is going to church. Not everybody who needs Jesus is going to church, but everybody watches TV. What a great way to reach people that need help and they don't even know what they need. So I'm asking you today, if you will send in a special financial gift just marked for TV airtime, and we're gonna use it just to help pay television bills and to reach out in new places where we're not yet on TV. I would be so appreciative if you would do that. I believe you will, and I thank you for it ahead of time. God bless.